Hello, welcome to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. Last week we had Sean Rocks on. This week we have special guest Brittany Avery. So Brittany, tell us about your music. My music. Depends on what you want to know about it. <laughs> Everything. Everything. My music. Let's see. I play two different kinds of music. I play um, outlaw country music, which is, well, I hate to mention that first, but <laughs> of course that's funny songs that talk about experiences I've had and some that I've made up. Thank God they were made up. <laughs> but, uh, and then I have, um, I play really sweet stuff about love and heartbreak and tragedy and things that tend to happen. So <laughs> Things that speak to people. Yeah, things I hope people can relate to. So, <laughs> Well, that's cool. Tell me about your beginnings in music. Beginnings in music. <clears throat> um, well, I was three years old. I think I started singing. Um, I was... I remember my mom showing us videotapes, you know, and she said she caught me one day in the bathroom, naked, and a three-year-old, you know, I turned on the shower and uh, singing, uh, taking a bath, taking a bath. So I think that was my first debut. <laughs> <laughs> it was in the bathtub. So, <laughs> but uh, I started playing. Let's see, music. Let's see where it started. I uh, started playing guitar at twelve, or not twelve, ten. And uh, when I was playing guitar, my dad, you know, came from a musical family. So my music started back then. So. so tell me about your learning on the guitar. Oh, I learned on a 12 string. And my dad, we're very family oriented. So my dad, he, his, his family played music. And I'm very big in tra traditions. Mm -hmm. If my family did it, I want to do it too, as long as it's not going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> so That's a good we, ambition. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Clean record so far. <laughs> but uh, my dad... He taught me when I was 10 how to play, and he said, as, as soon as my fan, hand can go around the, the neck of the guitar, I can start playing. Well, that wasn't soon enough for me. I figured I'm going to have to be 20-something years old before my hands, you know, could fit, but then I realized I'm a giant. <laughs> so it didn't take too long for me to grow into the guitar. <laughs> but um, he taught me at age of 10 how to play a 12-string Fender guitar. Cool. And uh, that's where that got started. So. So, how long did it take you to like build up to actually being able to write songs or to to play an entire song even somebody else's? Uh, how long did it take you to get proficient at it? Proficient, you know, because a twelve string I know is not easy. Oh no, it's everything's double string. Yeah, and uh, you have to have pretty big gorilla hands to be able to play <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> but uh, let's see, the right. Well, you said to get up to write music. Well, to. To actually play a song on the guitar. I mean, to where you could say, I can play guitar. Oh, wow. I think I told them that the second day I started playing, even though that wasn't true. <laughs> <laughs> it probably took me probably a month to really start, I believe, start getting into it more. Mm -hmm. um, I know I used to lock myself in my bedroom for hours. I would disappear, and uh, my dad said, only thing he hears music coming through the hallway and, you know, out of my bedroom because I, I was trying to learn as fast as I can and well that's cool that I started writing about the same time I started playing if I could play the G chord you know <laughs> that, that's a song <laughs> play the G chord all the way through it <laughs> <laughs> so that's where that started I guess <laughs> well that's cool you are actually from this area right but mm -hmm. you you moved you lived in Kentucky for a while oh I did I lived in Kentucky <clears throat> for about three years uh, I just recently moved home back in November end of November mm -hmm. um I love Kentucky a whole lot. It's a beautiful place up there. Mm. Music's totally different. Uh, bluegrass, a lot of deep Appalach Appalachian bluegrass roots and uh, different techniques. And there's always classes going on. How to play banjo, like, you know, I guess Lee Sexton or <laughs> <laughs> so Ricky Skaggs. Or I don't, I don't think he plays banjo. I don't know. <laughs> 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 there, uh, There's always classes and courses. And I guess old timers, you'd say, that... Uh, that wants to teach you tradition, mm -hmm. too. So that's, Kentucky was great about bluegrass and tradition. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, tell us about some of your time up there. Time up there. Stories. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kentucky up there. I learned a lot. You know, living in Kentucky was totally different than living in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I, I gotta say, I learned, I, I moved a lot musically. I've learned a whole lot more bluegrass styles mm -hmm. of playing, of course, because that's the bluegrass state. But I, I, love, I liked it up there with, you know, there are different kind of techniques they used. And, mm -hmm. But Kentucky was totally different than Georgia. 
people were different. I don't, I don't think they're as, as accepting up, up there as they are down here. Um, up there, I don't want to say people are sheltered because they're, they're really not that sheltered. I'm pretty much sheltered. But <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, up there, they're very, um, one, I, I want to say down here we're open box. You know, we're accepting. We, if I use a cuss word with a song, everybody thinks, ha that's funny. Yeah. No big deal. But uh, up there, it's kind of like, oh, no, you just said a dirty word. And very grandma's, conservative. Yeah, very conservative. Grandma's sitting over there, and grandma's like, oh, my God, did she just say that? Or they would say, oh, my God. They say, oh, my gosh, did she just say what I think she said? <laughs> she said the D word. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so they're not as accepting to my yeah. music up there as we are down here. How do the, the venues, uh, like the accessibility of venues, differ Kentucky from to the valley here? Well, it depends on what side of Kentucky you're on. I know I was on eastern, no, yeah, eastern Kentucky, mm-hmm. and there was not a whole lot of places to play, to be honest with you. Uh, there was some open night nights that you could go to, but you'd have to drive an hour or 45 minutes from where I lived because I lived in a dry county. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, but there's... The, the venues differ. Up there, I think the only place I really got to play was a gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> so, I know that sounds bad, but I loved it. Well, it was a lot opportunity. of fun. Opportunity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anytime if I could play. It didn't matter where it was, as long as I was having fun. But down here, the venues are, they're, they're more open to having more people come in. Mm-hmm. But as far as... You know, the difference between Kentucky, there's not as many places as to play up there as mm. there is down here. Right. Tell me about your your creativity. What drives you to write and to continue writing? I think my emotions. Um, I have a lot of life experiences. Um, pretty wise for my age. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> depends on what aspect of my life you look at. <laughs> but um, I think what drives me is, um, like I said, my life experiences, you know, heartbreak, uh, losing a loved one, funny things that happen in life, that just goofy stories, stuff I tend to find myself into. <laughs> <laughs> um, especially heartbreak and love, you know, those, those two inspire me a whole lot. Mm-hmm. Those two are such a vast, um, I guess it's so vast subjects. You can write about, I love my dog, or, you yeah. know, or I fell in love with somebody, then they stabbed me in the heart, you know. So I, I like to write about life experiences. That's what drives me, and people, and people that can relate to my music. That and that's, in, in my opinion, that's that's hi- highly, very much to be respected, um, as opposed to writing cookie cutter stuff, as opposed to actually writing from the heart, because that's where that's where all the feeling is. So let's go to one of Britney's songs, and we'll be right back. Okay, this song's called "Till I Get to See You." And the song, um, the story behind the song is uh, while I was living in Kentucky, I had a crush on somebody, but I wasn't going to get with them, you know. But I, like, enjoyed seeing them. So this is kind of a song I wrote about waiting at the bar for them to come, and they never do. So this is called Till I Get to See You. Well, it's two beers down and I'm waiting on the bar stool. I ain't leaving here till I get to see you. 1 a.m., the bar door shut. I'm sitting there crying in the cab of my truck tonight. But tears stinging hands that grow weaker by the day. The smile across my face that is just withering away. Without your lights to make the neon signs glow I'll wait for you on the spot stool all alone With no guarantee that you'll leave and walk through that door With no guarantee that I'll ever see you no more So I take my chance And I down a few more beers Make people question while I'm hanging around here And then it's two beers down I'm waiting on the bar stool I ain't leaving 
leaving here till I get to see you. 1 a.m., the bar door shut. I'm sitting there crying in the cab of my truck tonight. So could you make a time and make this heart of yours? Oh, back to mine. Cause when the drinks wear off and the morning makes it fine, you know I can't seem to drink you off of my mind. Though God knows I try and it's always two beers down. I'm sitting on the bar stool. I ain't leaving here till I get to see you. 1 a.m. The bar door shut. I'm sitting there crying in the cab of my truck tonight. So could you make a time and make this heart of yours? Make it back to mine. Cause without your lights to make the neon signs glow, I'll wait for you on spa stool all alone. With no guarantee that you'll ever walk through that door. With no guarantee that I'll ever see you no more. So I'd take my chance and I'd down a few more beers. Make people question while I'm hanging around here. And then it's two beers down and I'm waiting on a bar stool. I ain't leaving here till I get to see you. 1 a.m. The bar door shut. I'm sitting there crying in the cab of my truck tonight. So could you make a time and make this heart of yours? Make it back to mine.